Taco Palenque fans, we have something special for you. Try the Casero Taco now for only $2.75 Monday through Thursday. Flavor packed with premium sirloin rice and refried beans. Only at Taco Palenque. At participating locations for limited time, not valid for delivery. Other restrictions may apply. From a highly secure network of top secret locations across South Texas, this is the Spurs Insider, brought to you by Taco Palenque. I am Mike Finger, joined as always by our Express News panel of beat writers, Tom Orsborne and Jeff McDonald, and sports editor Nick Talbot. We left you last week on a positive note, as we so often do on this show, which has been hailed by fans of Tony Robbins as one of the most uplifting podcasts on the internet. But we have to we have to begin this week with with a bit of a concession, a bit of a downer, as it turns out. The local cagers will not have us working into June as 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 we'd expected all season. Tom, what 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 is your reaction to the news that the Spurs have been mathematically eliminated? I know it's a shock, but mathematically eliminated from the play in slash playoff race this year. Recount. <laughs> Recount. That's true. Yeah. We yeah. could send this all the way to the Supreme Court if we need to. That's Does right. That yeah. They're, they're, somewhere. Yeah, they're playing well. I mean, it seems like if if you just go by anecdotal evidence of how excited people are in the crowd, I mean, how if if you can get crowds like that, how how could how could they not win? Um, I don't know. Well, uh, it it is true though. With at the end of last week, we you know when 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 the Spurs were on a a two game winning streak it was like could could they do it could they pull this out could they go all the way but alas they're they're in last place in the west and didn't quite get there but jeff can speak to this he was on the most recent road trip where uh, they they nearly won a game at sacramento went right down to the wire and then just bulldozed the golden state warriors in san francisco they're 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 playing much better yeah, they're actually playing much better since getting back from the rodeo road trip. Um, I guess it's three and three now is the record, which uh, mathematically is much better than the rest of the season. And even the eye test, um, except for that, except for that game against Houston where it was just a clunker, and uh, that five minute stretch at home against the Warriors, um, they look pretty, pretty, pretty good. What do you think goes into that? That's a good question. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of things clicking. I think uh, I think when you compare the the coming home from the rodeo trip to the end of the rodeo trip, I think the end of the rodeo trip, they were just dog tired. I mean, the rodeo trip is 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 not for the faint of heart, and I think maybe um as we've gotten farther away from the Tim Tony and Manu era, uh it's maybe provided a bit of perspective on just how insane that was that that team was able to mentally um, navigate that rodeo trip so successfully for 15 years or whatever, never having a losing rodeo trip. Um, because you see the younger teams that come in that aren't used to it, that don't have, maybe don't just don't have that wherewithal, that mental toughness, and they get crushed by the end of it. And we saw that at the end of the rodeo trip. And then when they got back, they looked really – just was re- rejuvenated. It was almost like a weight lifted, like that thing's over. And they just looked, they had a, a, a little bit more of a, a pep in their step, you might say. And it, it's borne out on the, on the court. I mean, that victory in, uh, at Golden State and the near victory at Sacramento came without Victor Wimbanyama even on the floor. And the one in, um, Golden State came without Victor and Devin Vassell. So it's not, it's, it's a lot of people playing well all at once. And, you know why that's happening now and not earlier i don't know experience um just getting used to each other getting used to some guys that weren't used to playing getting used to playing i don't know will it keep up for the final six weeks of the season i don't know but it, it, it's been an, it's been nice to see over the last couple of weeks at least i think yeah. it's it's a there are there are a couple of factors at play and one of them and this is not to diminish how well the the Spurs without Victor Wembanyama played on that on that most recent road trip, but friend of the podcast Sean Elliott brings this up a lot during the broadcast, and that when these Spurs this season play with Victor Wembanyama in the lineup, 
they are getting everybody these be- like people aren't taking them lightly like they have in the past and when he's out maybe that dynamic isn't as much in play and that the the spurs who played quite well in sacramento and Sac- san francisco probably benefited a little from that in that the warriors probably weren't as up for the spurs as they would have been with victor in the lineup um sacramento probably the same way but uh to give credit where credit's due, the Spurs have played really well with Victor too. Um, got the got the two victories at home last week against Oklahoma City and Indiana. Played pretty well in that second game against Golden State. As Jeff said, there was a five minute stretch that doomed them, as it so often does. Um, so I, I think there's positives to be found, even if even if you can find, um, I guess some asterisk, some yeah. some some caveat. Um, Two two factors. They're just almost inexplicably shooting the ball better. Like they're the worst three point shooting in the entire world heading into the All Star break and coming out. They're one of the best shooting three point shooting teams in the NBA. What goes into that? Is that just variance? Is that just open shots people were not making for a whole two thirds of the season? All of a sudden going down for the next for the last or for the last two weeks, and we're seeing like. Guys like Malachi Branham, who struggled a lot with his three ball, all of a sudden being just Steph Curry. Zach Collins, a guy that struggled with his three ball, all of a sudden just can't miss. Um, Is it luck? Is it just good fortune? Is it the worm turning? That's one factor. The other thing is they're playing better defense than they were um, going to the All-Star break. They, They actually have had a passable defense both on paper and, and via the eye test since coming back from the break. And that's maybe one thing that might, might, might be more sustainable. Like you have more control over that than you do whether, whether shots go down. So those are the two factors I think that have fueled this, uh, this stretch of 500 ball. Tomas. Yep. The uh, sh- clock struck midnight um, Monday night against the Warriors. Malachi one of eight. 0 for 4 from three point range. Um, other guys, other guys struggled that had been playing well. So, you know, they just kind of reverted back to form. The third quarter blues, as Jeff mentioned, that five, uh, you know, that five minute stretch, five minute drought, um, that resurfaced. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just when you think maybe they've got some consistency, turn the corner consistency wise, they're, they're, they're back to uh, struggling again. And progress areas. is not linear. Yeah, yeah. Tom, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do something really, really ignorant and ask you what went wrong during that five minute stretch. No, because, no. Because as we all know, when things go wrong for five minute stretch stretches, we can probably figure it out on our on our own. We're we're smart people. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes. I heard that last night. I, <laughs> I, I woke up. Uh, you know, five o'clock this morning thinking about that. <laughs> did you really? Yes, I did, as I often do. Uh, what, what, why would you ask? That's sick. I why know. Would you, that's, that's sick. That, hey, that's that's my life, yeah. <laughs> um, why would you ask a coach what went wrong during a five-minute stretch when they got outplayed when a, reporter, when a reporter could figure it out for himself if they just watched the game? And the next question to him was, um, are you going to talk, you know, are you going to talk to Victor and, uh, uh, you know, Devin? why would he not talk to Victor? He talks well, to Devin Vassell too. Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, on and fun. on. Yeah. On and on. There's, there's, uh, uh, should be said, we're making fun of the, the venerable head coach of the Spurs a little here. Uh, there's, there's, there can be challenging Greg Popovich press conferences and there can be delightful ones. You often don't know which one's coming and makes it fun. Um, you think that's fun? I'm, you're I'm, you're also sick. <laughs> we're 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 trying to live up to our reputation as as a as a, a self help, positive, um, confidence building podcast. That's why people tune in every week from around the world, from from nations near and far, uh, and we appreciate them. So yeah, it can be fun. Challenges can be fun, Jeff McDonald. Challenges. No. Can be fun. Uh, one person who exemplifies that, by the way, and I, and I want to make sure to point this out because so often we talk about players' shortcomings and players, especially the past few years, 
on this team that has not played at a, anything really close to a playoff level. Um, I, I, I just want to say that I've, I've been kind of impressed with Malachi Branham on and off the floor lately. Um, he's a guy who had a rough stretch early in the season and actually fell out of the playing rotation uh, at one point for a couple of mental mistakes, uh, not shooting as well on down the line. He's played really well lately for the most part. And this sounds cliche. It sounds like the old sports writer, um, you know, caring too much about who talks to you and who doesn't. But, uh, and I want to have Jeff speak to this too. He played maybe what was on the way to the best game of his life at Sacramento. Um, really, really great all around floor game. And pretty much blew it in the, in the final seconds. Like it, it wasn't entirely his fault. It seemed talking to Trey Jones, talking to players, there was some miscommunication as to what the play was. Uh, so it's not all on Malachi Brandon, but he did commit the turnover that blew the game. And of all the people in the locker room after that game, he was the one most willing and 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 uh, eager to talk about it and to acknowledge that he messed up. And I just. I, I think there's something to that. We 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 um I don't mind praising guys when they're accountable. And uh and then he came back and played a really good game against Golden State uh in the victory. So um I, I think there have been some encouraging signs from him among other players on this team this season. If you want to talk about that that moment uh in the locker room as sort of a, a sign of mental growth or or mental maturity, I think that's a good that's a good example of it. Um, some of us maybe forget that these guys are 20 years old and they've never been in the situation of being scrutinized to quite this degree. And um, they also don't really have uh, the luxury that, that maybe a 20 year old in the Spurs locker room 10 years ago might've had yeah. and seen how, you know, Manu Ginobili talks to the media even after he has a bad game or Tim Duncan, uh, God help him might not show up when he scores 30, but if he scores eight and the Spurs get beat, he's right there in front of the media to take the the questions. Tony Parker, same way. Um, these guys don't really have that sort of um, that sort example. of role model example. So um, uh, when you do have a moment like Malachi had where he, he you know, on the surface blew the game, um, it was good to see him you know, step up and take questions from, from you and I and uh, not be defensive about it. I think that's one thing maybe the younger players can learn. If you just own it, if you don't get defensive about it, it goes a lot better for you. And people have, um, uh, they're more understanding of it, I think. If you just step up and say, hey, I shouldn't have made that pass. I, 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 I If I could take it back, I would. And then it's over. Then it's over, yeah. you know. Um, you know, we're not going to drag it out or beat you over the head with it or tell everybody you're a bad player because of one play, you know. So I I, I think it was a sign of this, uh, at least one player on this team, kind of kind of uh, taking a taking a growing step. Uh, maybe yeah. and maybe we're making too much of it. I don't know. But um, I, I definitely saw that and, and clocked that when it happened. You know, you, you don't you didn't know walking in there if Malachi was going to talk about it or act like you were a jerk for asking or anything, but we had a nice conversation with him uh, about that and other topics. And I, that's kind of the way it should be. Yeah. And, and I guess just to expand on, on that night, um, it's, it's going to be almost a week ago once this podcast hits our listeners ears, but I, I think those two games back to back. And even though Victor Wembanyama wasn't on that trip, we can talk about his, injury status and his um, sort of story in a little bit. But um, those two games back-to-back -back without Victor around, I, I think were pretty important um, for this team's growth. To to have played that well in a game that they were supposed to get blown out in at Sacramento and to be that close and then to kind of have it fall apart at the end, uh, that was brutal. That was really brutal. And it wasn't all Malachi Branham's fault. Um, Trey Jones, who was on the sideline at that time, had said he didn't think that everybody on the floor understood what the play was. There was some confusion. But to, to rehash, the the uh, the Kings had tied it. 
uh, in the final 20, I know it was the last 24 seconds because the shot clock was off. The Spurs came running up the court. They did not have a true point guard on the floor. Trey was on the sideline. Well, and, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah. But it was just a shame they didn't have a timeout to use in that situation. Well, well that's what I'm getting into. Against, so much the, working against them. The Spurs had a timeout left, elected not to take it, and there was sort of confusion. And uh, Pop is on the sideline kind of waving Zach Collins over to set a screen for Malachi. They'd run that play a few times in the game. Um Malachi, I think he mentioned to us after the game, he should have known that situation. If there wasn't the proper separation, if there wasn't the proper look, he shouldn't have thrown the ball. He did. And Sabonis just made an unbelievable play. <laughs> uh, a, a big man to to make that steal way out at the top of the, at the top of the key, uh, almost near midcourt. And then uh, break out for a, a layup to take the lead. That a, a situation where the Spurs should have had the last shot and sh the worst situation should have been overtime. Now they're down by two, looking for a, looking for a, sh a, a, a last second heave to win it, and they obviously didn't get it. Um, so uh, to to endure that, and that was clearly a, a, a screw up by somebody, maybe by lots of bodies, by lots of people. And like I yeah. understand, I understand not. Uh, not preferring not to call timeout and have to run something against a set defense. Like I understand uh -huh. that being the, the first idea, but uh, when, when, when things are going awry and like your first idea is clearly about to blow up in your face and you still have eight, eight seconds, nine seconds, 10 seconds left. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what that timeout is for. Yeah. Like call the timeout, set something up. If it, if you don't get a good shot or make a good shot out of that, you go to overtime. But just yeah. letting the guys play it out, I, I I understand that. I understand letting them play it out sometimes, but knowing when to pull the plug on the playing it out, when you don't have a point guard on the floor and the play's getting blown up and half the guys aren't running it right, that seems yeah. what that that timeout's for. But anyway, it happened. Yeah. I think that wasn't that the case in Cleveland. Uh, that road loss in Cleveland that was botched. Um, I think they had a timeout there to use. Was that when when Sohan threw the ball out of bounds? Correct. Yes, yeah. ball had a timeout there, and Pop chose not to use it. Correct. I, I, well, I just I just think when like guys on the sideline are watching and going, "Wow!" Like nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, that's where you need to call the timeout. Anyway. Yeah. Of course, plays coming out of timeout haven't gone so well. <laughs> that's that's the, that's the other I mean, thing. That, that, that that's might why be you why you through, but but but. Yeah. I You're mean, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, well, you were you were double damned if you don't in that situation because yeah. they threw it away for a dunk. Yeah, a lot mm. of people probably thought they should have called that timeout. Uh, that's what I mean. Jeff thought I was watching the kind of the same thing. It just seemed odd, especially when you didn't have Trey out there, which yeah. was questionable anyway. A lot of yeah. things go wrong in games. Yeah, <laughs> probably figure it out for yourself. You um, figure it out. The um. Where I was going with that is that I think that 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 was just brutal. Never not people that was not uh, that was not fun. Pop pop after that game that was not fun. A lot of people after that game, and then you go to Golden State, and even though Steph Curry is out, and even though it's not the Golden State uh, of the of the dynasty of the last decade, it's still a pretty good team. And not only are you, are you without Victor Wembanyama, it turns out before the game starts that. Devin Vassell is not playing in this game. So you're without your two best players, basically. Uh, in the last game of a road trip where everybody is, everybody could be expected to say, we're 12 and a half point underdogs. Let's just get the heck out of here and get back home. Uh, up in the uh, press row at the Chase Center, the sparkling Chase Center, the lovely Chase Center, where we always feel welcome. A uh, great, great place to to watch a game, cover a game. I think I'd mentioned to Jeff McDonald that even though the point spread was twelve and a half, I might make it seventeen and a half, and I might still take the Golden State Warriors because why would why why would the Spurs compete in this game? What 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 what, what, what evidence is there that that this could be a good game? And for the record, the, for the record, I took the points from the very beginning. Spurs and the points from tip I'm not, I don't know about that. Ah uh, yes. Uh, oh wait, hold on. You you hold on. You you uh, proposed that to me, and I said I would take the Spurs and the points. 
Okay. I'm not uh, okay because because oh uh, you know for for reasons we sort of alluded to uh, why would right. Golden State compete? They have no reason. Yeah, you're, well, you clearly were right. Clearly, because this, thank because, can, 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 can we can we get like a I guess that's not a screen grab but like a clip of that? Can that be the clip from this? Sure. This one, you telling me that I'm right? Sure. For once, you were right. Thank you. You were right because because the Spurs played inspired, the Golden State Warriors did not, and. Much in the same way the the Spurs kind of gave it to the Kings two nights earlier for for three, three and a half quarters, they did it to the Warriors, and this time they just pulled away. And uh, who who were the stars in that game? You had your a, a, a nice game from Jeremy Sohan, but but uh, the game story in the Express News print edition and online by our great great often correct beat writer Jeff McDonald focused on the grocery store bagger. Former alleged HEB employee Dominic Barlow in his first career podium game in which he, got, I'll let Jeff tell the story that he told so, so well in the print edition of the Express News the next day about Dom Barlow coming to talk to us. Well, I mean, can we first, can we get this guy on the HEB commercials? Like it just seems, <laughs> it seems like an obvious fit. We'll, we'll remind the viewers slash listeners who, who have, Heard the story. Some of our most dedicated listeners have heard this story before, but remind them where the HUB origin story came from. It was a it was a pop uh, a running pop punchline last year. Um, every so often, pop will stumble on something that gets a laugh in uh, one market, and then he'll be asked a similar question in another market. Like this podcast, we go back to the same yes. tropes over and over. Again. He'll anyway. go back to to that pump punchline, you know. Uh, and you know, those of us that have been following them around and kind of roll our eyes, we've heard it before, but everyone laughs again. It's, it's like, I mean, it's, it's very much like following Richard Pryor around the country. You know, you get used to the same punchlines. They don't hit as hard. Except yeah, sometimes that, Richard Pryor yells at you for some reason. Anyway, yes, uh, cursing, lots of cursing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anyway, well, it was last year when people would just ask about Dominic Barlow, who was on a two-way contract, and every so often he'd come up and play a few minutes and look look competent. And Bob would always say, "Like, uh, I don't even know where where the front office found these found this guy." I thought I asked, "Is he a, was he a, was he bagging groceries at HEB?" And everyone uh-huh. would laugh. And I remember asking Dominic Barlow about that; he thought it was funny too. But uh, he did not come from HEB; he came from an overtime elite in Atlanta, which yeah. might as well be the same thing: O T E H E B. Yep. You know, as far but, as uh, but Saturday he he came into the post game interview room after a hell of a performance. Is that right? After a uh, uh, a heck of a what are you, Richard Pryor? All of a sudden, <laughs> well, heck, I of, got, heck of a I got caught heck up of in the moment. Yeah, what was it? Uh, Nineteen points, season high, mm-hmm. and we're just all over the place. Bunch of and rebounds, bunch of rebounds. Like he's a, nine. I think it was eight eight rebounds. A couple blo- uh, blocking a steal. Like he was all over the place. He was mm-hmm. playing his heart out. Yeah, playing his heart out. And, and so, I mean, ahead. that's how you win games like that is guys like Dominic Barlow. And uh, I think Julian Champagny had a season high, too. Like, I don't think those guys were really on the Warriors, like, you got to shut these guys down, um, you know, list. So when you have guys like that step up, that's how you win those games. Anyway, what, what, what was your question about Dominic Barlow? His him first come podium to the game. Yeah, he had his first podium game. What about he it? He did a mic check. He did do a mic check. Because as as you do. Yeah, it was. I, th- I thought that was great. You, He's you, his own roadie. You wrote that much better in the paper than you described it on the well, podcast. I, I, I write better than print journalist. I write better than I talk. Yeah, I write better than I talk. Hey, uh, we're we're gonna wind down, but that reminds me of. Uh, I know we're supposed to finish uplifting, and we will, but um, just an annoying thing that was brought up again uh, yesterday. Uh, I wrote about a very very delightful conversation I had with Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors about Jeremy Sohan and how much he likes Jeremy. Uh, he likes the fact that Jeremy told us that he wants to be Draymond Green and more more than Draymond Green. Uh, he likes that Jeremy doesn't give a bleep about what people think, which is very Draymond Greenish. Greenish. Um, he likes that uh, people compare them in the way that they defend and the way they sort of see the floor and want to get their teammates involved. It was, it was, it was really nice. And, and two guys who are kind of known as really annoying antagonists, instigators, uh, both are similar in that. I see why you like them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I like those guys. Um, anyway, there's this thing where people are like, where's the video of this interview? 
you know? And that's just, that just, as an old, I'm an old man, that just, it drives me crazy. Because, uh, you know, much like, like Jeff McDonald, uh, the, 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 the reason I make the big bucks, <laughs> the reason I'm able to pay the rent is because, uh, you know, you, 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 you write. We write stuff people like to read. And, uh, you know, come on, read a little, America. <laughs> I think people have gotten... not, not, not everything has to be a TikTok clip. Yeah. And just this is inside journalism that I, I'm not sure how many of our listeners care about. But like the best conversations are the ones that are just between two human beings where you're not holding up a camera in front of their face and asking someone to perform. And I think just as, as using that as one example, I don't think Draymond would have been nearly as interesting if between us, I was holding up a cell phone, like, uh, you know, expecting him to perform. And so, um, I, you know, I, th th this is an old man ranting or an old man people uh... ruminating on stuff that people might not care about. But I, I miss those days when you could just sit and have a conversation with a, with a player or a coach mm -hmm. or whatever. People do one of two things when you put a camera in their face. Either they either get way too guarded and clam up, or yep. they go the other way and feel like they have to ham it up and be yep. performative and perform. And neither one of those are, are are optimal. Right. The first one you don't get really any information, and the second one is is not genuine. Yep. So, I'm. Yep. I don't. I don't like all this stuff being like. I'd. Read, I don't like all this stuff being on a podium. Like Dominic Barlow was great, and I'm glad he had his moment. It would have yep. been, it would have been a, it probably would have been a better interview. I mean, it was a fine interview. We got great stuff out of it, but it would have been even better if we just talked to him like a human off to the side. Well, there's, there's, you can have a combination of both. And uh, yeah, for, like, sure, uh, for sure, for sure. That's, that's, that's the world we live in. And, and I want to shout out to, uh, for those of you uh, who care about more sports in San Antonio than just the Spurs, uh, if you care about like high school sports, um, things that are going on around the community, like Ron Herod is a young journalist that that has been with us for a year or so, and he's done amazing things. He 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 won an award for some of his video uh, coverage of high school sports, and uh, David Hinojosa is joining in on that. They do great stuff talking to high school athletes on Instagram and TikTok and that type of they're, stuff. They're and great. There, there's places for that, but I think that I, I think that, you just uh, contradicted everything we just said. <laughs> well, I, no, I, 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 my point is that that you can do a little bit of both, and if you see the the Ron in the car, you don't demand. Well, where's the print version of this? And if you see a print version of Draymond Green interviews, like I don't see why you have to say where's the video. I, I, I don't I don't care about this unless there's a video. You know what I mean? Like like there can be both. Um, and you know we're we're talking about this on a podcast. This isn't a, this isn't a uh, in the newspaper roundtable. Why not? Can we get a transcript of this and print it in the newspaper? <laughs> maybe, where's the, maybe, where's... maybe we should. I guess what I'm what I, if we're going to leave this and Tom, you can jump in before you. Do you have anything to add before my big finish? Speaking of reading, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, sports editor Nick Talbot. I know you'll take note of this. I noticed that Victor is plowing his way through another Brandon Sanderson novel. Um, oh, this, which, one, which one this time? Do you you know? know, it was, it was, I saw it in his locker last night. It, it's in French. So oh, that I, would make it harder. <laughs> I didn't quite get the title, but it's a thick one. It's another thick one. And uh, he just finished that Stephen King uh, uh, thick one. And he's, yeah, he's off to weird. another one. So, so kids be like Victor, read these thick novels. Which uh, uh, Stephen no King was it? Was it was it Cujo? It was no. the gun. It was the gunslinger. It was my favorite. No oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. genre. Read, read, find something you like, kids, and read. That's and, all this, and, and get your and, nose out of those darn comic books. And Stephen yeah. King novels famously never adapted to the cinema. So you 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 got to read them. Uh, there, there's there's no movies available of Stephen King. The, the Stephen the King gunslinger one is terrible though. You read the books. The books amazing. Got the great opening line. I highly read about Shawshank uh, Redemption. That was a that was a novella. And uh, it yeah, did, all well. all the good Stephen King. We're well, getting way off topic here. Uh, all the good Stephen King ones movies are usually off his novella. Stand by Me, Shawshank Redemption. You know, all, it's really hard to adapt the longer ones. Anyway. Weekend at Bernie's. Big Stephen King fan, read most of the books, obviously. So you will see the guy that wrote Weekend at Bernie's. He, he yes, the definitely wrote Weekend at Bernie's. And, oh and no, no, he wrote Weekend at Bernie's too. He didn't write the first uh, one. Uh, no one's that. No one's that talent. 
Yeah. So anyway, uh, as we leave you for next week, we're, we didn't even get to uh, before we leave the Victor Wimanyama update. He was wait, back. Wait, I just thought of something. Can I say one thing? Uh huh. How, how was there a weekend at Bernie's too? Like it happened again. They pulled off the same scam with their dead boss twice. There was a Home Alone too, bro. Well, that's just bad parenting. I get they it. left. They left that poor kid. There were more than two times. Homes. Well, they, they, yeah. Come on, man. The second Home Alone, it was his. He, he ran off. It's uh-huh. his fault. It's little Kevin McAllister's fault. I'm looking forward. Seriously, to how do you pull, how do you too. how do you pull off the same same scam with your dead boss twice? Like it seems like the second time people would be like, "Oh no, no, I bet he's dead this time." We remember, guys. You clearly didn't watch Weekend of Bernie's too. There's it's it, it was explained in the film, in the subtext. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm the I'm the moron that didn't see Weekend at Bernie's too. The uh, the Victor Wimbanyama update. He missed those games after the uh, some various bangs and bruises in that Houston loss. Missed both West Coast games. Probably could have played if it was the NBA Finals. But one thing that was uh, that was funny about that is uh, you just think about the logistics of it all. They played a, a game in Houston. Um, then we're set to fly to Sacramento, uh, follow that with a, a bus trip to San Francisco. And what they did at, after that Houston game uh, was send him back to San Antonio because they didn't want to make him fly across the country. They wanted his, they wanted the Spurs medical staff to look at him. So they sent him back to San Antonio in a sprinter van, uh, which seems great. And he could have... Uh, he could have joined the team on the West coast after seeing the doctors in San Antonio that morning. But think about it. How are you going to get a seven foot four guy <laughs> to, to Sacramento, Sa- San Francisco? You can't Victor Wimbanyama yeah. can, cannot fly commercial. I got two words for you. Business select. This <laughs> business select on Southwest. He, he might get that tall seat uh, in the exit row, but that still uh, that might create a bit of a furor in the age of social media that uh that those tim duncan uh tony parker monte ginobili danny green guys didn't create back when they famously flew southwest from miami to san antonio what 10 more than 10 years ago um so it's it, it's basically hard it, it it's 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 a it's it's a task to transport victor Wimbanyama from san antonio to sacramento on his own it was like you can't fly him commercial uh, do you rent? Do you uh, rent out a charter just for him and spend, spend that expense, or do you just let him take it easy for a few days uh, in San Antonio? That's what they did. He came back, played great against Golden State in that loss on Monday. We're taping this before the game on on Tuesday against Houston, but he's expected. I think he's expected to play. We're not sure that he might have a minutes restriction. Maybe on the second night of a back to back, he won't play. But he mentioned after. Monday night's game that he still intends to play as many games as he can through the end of the season, even though he's set to play in the Olympics this summer, uh, no thoughts of shutting him down. So we covered that. Anything to add there or wrap it up? Soup to nuts. Soup, soup to, to nuts. nuts. We did it. Soup to nuts. And, uh, you know, it's good. It's good. You you listen to the podcast. You can read us in the expressnews.com uh, on the Express News print edition. Many, many ways to enjoy all of us on this uplifting, positive podcast. We encourage you to do it in, in all sorts of ways. And all our colleagues across this fine nation, around this wonderful world, and support journalism in, in, it, in all of its forms. And until we see you next time, take care of each other and keep it real. And eat taco palenque. There you go.